So for our 10 o'clock slot on Sunday, we have Weaponizing Your Pets, The War Kitta and the Denial of Service Dog by Jane Bransfield. Good morning, DEF CON. I can't tell you what a pleasure it is to be here. I've wanted to present here for a while, so I'd like to start the speech with an impromptu announcement. Uh, spilled, never to say big data, APT, cloud, or cyber. So I never said those. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, I'm weaponizing your pets. Let's get started. My name is Gene Bransfield. I'm a principal security engineer at Tenacity Solutions. And if you spend enough time with me, you'll figure out I love my job. It's a fantastic thing to get wake up in the morning and like, let's go to work and get paid and do cool stuff. And people hang out with me like, oh, tell me more about your job. This, that, this, yeah, they want my job. And the joke's on them because they can't have my job. I'm going to be the guy that dies on like the Friday of a long weekend and they'll come in Tuesday morning and there I am in the corner and they'll clean me up so they don't step on that stain over there. That's the Gene Bransfield Memorial stain on the carpet. So. <laughs> So what's this talk about? This is talk about having a humorous idea, bringing that idea to fruition, stories of triumph and woe and valuable lessons learned. And I've got a lot of slides, so let me get started. Weaponizing your pets. Why in God's name would you want to do that? So the background is 15% of the world's internet traffic is dedicated to cats. That's right, we have the whole world's knowledge base at our fingertips and we watch cats and other things online. So I find most tech briefings boring and I know lay people find them boring and I have to give them. And the minute I get the least bit technical, I can see people's eyes glaze over. They start thinking of jujubes or whatever it is they think of. So I started including pictures of cats and humorous stories around cats. In fact, this is the picture that started it all. <laughs> oh, shut up. That's awesome and you know it. <laughs> So I just finished one such presentation somebody came up to me and said, I'm going to give you my cat collar and they told me about it. It had a GPS chip in it, a cellular component and it could track where the cat was and if you were nervous you could send it a text message and it would, email, it would text you back with current GPS coordinates for the cat. And me being the guy I am, I was like, well now all I need is a Wi-Fi sniffer and I have a war kitty. <laughs> At the denial of service dog, I was at Outer Zone, which is another hacker conference. Lady Merlin walked in, a dog had saddlebags on it that said denial of service dog on it. I'm like, oh, cool, is there a pineapple in there or something? She's like, no, it's just, if you try to use the computer and he jumps in your lap, you can't do it. But the pineapple's a great idea. <laughs> So working animals are nothing new. We've got military and uh, law enforcement dogs and then we have badass dogs that jump out of the back of military aircraft and in the water. And then we have batter ass dogs. You see the guy, he's wearing a gas mask? The dog's wearing a mask too. This guy jumped out of an aircraft at 30,000 feet. That's a badass dog. <laughs> and then we have a real Navy SEAL. <laughs> And this is the truth. The Navy uses marine animals for harbor defense and finding mines and doing things like that. And uh, you think you're all stealthy, you're going to swim in and blow up a harbor and all of a sudden Flipper jumps out with a GoPro. <laughs> Bam. So, but there are other things that happened, like apparently back in the 60s, this is Acoustic Kitty, and there was a lot of pot going around the CIA. So imagine sitting around a table and saying, all right, we're going to take a cat. <clears throat> We're going to put a transmitter in his chest, a microphone in his ear, and an antenna wire on his neck and call it the Acoustic Kitty. <laughs> so, this actually got funded. I'm not kidding here. <laughs> they did all kinds of science and experiments and they brought it out for the first operational test. They had a couple guys over there. They put the cat down. Go listen to those guys. Can, cat ran right out into traffic and, and that was the end of Acoustic Kitty. <laughs> And at that point they defunded this, be not because it was a bad idea, but because all the scientists quit. They're like, screw this, cats are too hard to work with. <laughs> That's a very interesting thing they found. We'll get back to that later. So requirements, my stuff. The con op is to put collar or harness on a cat with stuff in it, have the cat do a walk about and get data. Rule number zero is I don't want to harm the cat. I don't like cats, but I don't want to wantonly harm an animal. It's just not who I am. Uh, rule number one, the cat shall be able to wear stuff comfortably and should not be harmed by stuff. And speaking to form, fit, function, but also we don't want any blinking lights and have a bird of prey up there. Oh, what's that blue light? Oh, cat. <laughs> <laughs> 
The GPS is going to record waypoints. The Wi-Fi sniffer is going to bring back all my stuff. And there are actually other products out there to deal with your cat here. Mr. Lee Cat Cam has a, ca a little camera that hangs on the bottom of the collar. Pet tracker stuff. But none of these solutions do Wi-Fi sniffing though. So I'm good there. So I thought about all kinds of different ways to do this. Uh, here's a gum stick solution. Very cool computer on a stick. Small form factor but kind of expensive. Uh, cotton candy again computer on a stick. Very cool solution. The Rock Trip 3066. This is like an open source thing that you can get and uh, do H attach it to the back of your television and do HD streaming. But there's also a Kali Linux image that you can put on this thing. And I was having trouble doing that. And I sat down, I had a beer, I thought about it. I said, I need something with small form factor, GPS, Wi Fi, and cellular. Any idea what that could possibly be? <laughs> How about a phone? <laughs> It was in my pocket the entire time. So now, okay, cool, I get to do some Android coding, get to make an APK, right? Now they already thought of that. It's called Wiggle. And you can just download this from the Android store and do wa war driving with your phone in your pocket anywhere, anytime. It's pretty cool. So now we need a volunteer cat. <laughs> this is uh, Skitsy. And this is a cat that belongs to my friend Reeves. And it's 22 inches from the base of the neck to base of the tail, 20 inches in the chest, and 12 inches on the neck. This is a big damn cat. <laughs> So I'm not worried about putting crazy things on him and his friends making fun of him because he'll just smack him around a little bit. So now we need a cat coat to hold the <laughs> so. And if you Google cat coat on the internet, you get pictures of girls wearing coats that have cats on them. And if you Google kitty coat on the internet, you get pictures of other things. Don't Google kitty coat from what. <laughs> But I figured, finally figured out the cat was big enough I could get a dog coat and a small enough form factor that it would fit. So that's what I did. So now the plan is put the tech on the coat, coat on the cat, send the cat on a walkabout, and recover data when the cat returns, and then profit, right? So step one, put the tech in the coat. Step two, put the coat on the cat. <laughs> and you can see he's thrilled. <laughs> so, send the cat on the walkabout, and then profit, right? No. So, <laughs> That's the backyard. <laughs> so what could have possibly gone wrong here? Well, it's obvious we didn't put the coat on tight enough. So we put the tech in the coat, put the coat on the cat, slap it real tight this time and send them on a walkabout and we wait. And we wait and we wait and we wait. It's like 18 hours later people are freaking out and finally people see you here by the back door a meow and you open the door and there's the cat. <laughs> So I'd like to draw your attention to the form factor of the cat going out the door <laughs> and coming back in. There's something. Uh, so we failed on that and the last known GPS location of it was right here. And we went and it's not there. So, <laughs> so, so far we've learned that cats are really hard to work with. <laughs> You should always test your expensive stuff out before sending it on, on a cat someplace. I'm going to need an Amazon Prime account. <clears throat> and they were worried about the cat, so no more coat. And so I have to think about a different situation. So I was talking to my friend Bill about this and he laughed. <clears throat> and he said, why don't you try Arduino? It's a small form factor, low power consumption, does exactly what you need, no more, no less. And there's all kinds of chips and solutions out there. So I'm like, my first question is, what the hell is Arduino? Turns out Arduino was like a project for some researcher in Italy, it was his, like his master's thesis. It, he's like, there's open source software out there, so why not open source hardware? It's really cool. It comes in a small chipset. They can stack them on top of each other. Lots of expansion shields. Uh, you can make robots, remote control cars, etc. This guy used it to check the food in his freezer. This guy used it to, he puts the glove on, he moves the glove, and the robot hand moves. And this guy used it to cheat on his video games. <laughs> relatively small form factor. The good news with Arduino is it's open source and relatively inexpensive until the cats start losing it and you have to buy nine of them. <laughs> Bad news is sometimes it's poorly documented. It can take forever to get to you if it's an expansion shield and a questionable form sometimes. I'm like, okay, cool. So that's great, but I've never done anything with Arduino. I've never worked with small firmware chipsets or anything like that. I'm not a professional coder, coder and I've never soldered before. And Bill's like, it's pronounced solder. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what? And he says, don't worry, it's easy. <laughs> Famous last words. So the plan now is to get some basic Arduino stuff, decide on the most accommodating form factor, put it all together in a collar, and then figure out something for the denial of service dog. So I went out and I bought the how-to book on the Arduino stuff. It came with an Arduino Uno and a whole bunch of guides. I did a whole bunch of learning and reading up on engineering and electronics and stuff. I get the flashy things flashing when they're supposed to flash and the non-flashy things not flashing when they're not supposed to flash. So I started, okay, I'm ready to go get the more advanced stuff. I need 
libraries for Wi-Fi, they got it. GPS, they got it. SD card stuff, they got it. Fantastic. Let's get a little bit higher now. Uh, JerryBBlum.com has a lot of videos on making these things work. I, I, I used him religiously and thank God like that. So now I did all my research and background investigation. I am now an expert. <laughs> So I went out and I got a Wi-Fi shield and I got a GPS shield. So the plan I had now was to get the Wi-Fi collecting stuff and writing it to an SD card. The GPS, get the GPS stuff writing to an SD card, combine the two and then profit. <clears throat> so the Wi-Fi shield was really cool. It was easy to set up. Drivers worked right away. It was even talked about on the Arduino website. Messing around with some parameters and variables and I've got my solution right there for that. That was easy. So GPS, not so much easy. A uh, <clears throat> little bit about GPS, the NMEA string is what the satellites are broadcasting up there. Uh, National Maritime Electronic Association. This, uh, this uh, comma separated value right there is what the satellite is actually sending out. And it's the job of the receiver to take that in and translate it into lat long, et cetera. <clears throat> So the GPS boot process is it starts up and it doesn't know where it is on the planet. It could be in your back pocket. It could be in Timbuktu. So it has to listen to space. Get, get, get at least three satellites listened to them, figure out the NMEA string and this whole process can take two to 15 minutes and if somebody's looking over your shoulder, it's going to take 15 minutes. <laughs> so, so the GPS shield was rather poorly documented. Pardon me. Uh, there were no docs really in the kit, and so it took me a good week of, or several weeks of, what's wrong with this? Why isn't it working? Finally, at the very long end of a research effort, I found out that the baud rate is supposed to be 34,800. And I wanted to get some, some demonstration of how it was poorly documented, but now I go online, I can't not find that the baud rate is 34,800. I don't know why. <coughs> so, put all the components together. <coughs> Pardon me. The Wi-Fi shield you see is sitting on top of the Arduino Uno. They stack right this. The GPS shield is off to the side because I wanted to reuse some of the pins. And so I put this all together and I combined the code strings and I get this weird error about 80% memory utilization. And I'm like, well, I see that on Windows all the time. Blow that off. Go for it. Yeah. After a little while, I was like, no, they were telling me the truth. 80% utilization. The chip can't work anymore. There's only 32K of memory on an Arduino Uno. The Arduino Mega, however, has 256K of memory. So that's good. So I went out and purchased the Mega and you can see if it's exactly like the shield does. Put that all together, messed around with some variables, did some stuff and woohoo, it works. I now have a working prototype. So the Arduino Mega 2560 is more memory, more better, more ports is more better, but more size is not more better. <laughs> So I searched all over the internet trying to find something. It says Tidy Arduino, uh, Tiny Duino 2560 from jkdevices.com. jkdevices.com is a complete ripoff and I told them I was going to mention that during my talk. They never sent me my stuff. So DEF CON no knows about that. So, but I didn't know about that at the time so now I need a, uh, I need a Wi-Fi chip, the Adafruit Wi-Fi chip breakout board right there. Also looking into another form factor, this is the Spark Core. And it's got, they, I call it the, the Arduino mullet because it's got Wi-Fi in the front and Arduino in the back. <laughs> and of course we need a GPS chip, the GP635T, an SD card breakout board for writing all this stuff down. So the Mega Mini, it, the Arduino, uh, the Arduino Mega worked but the Mega Mini it said is going to be four weeks to ship and other solutions are too big in size or too small in memory. So I went with the Spark Core which is also having problems shipping so I borrowed one from my friend Bill who got me started on this in the whole place. So. <clears throat> The tech on the Spark, uh, the ARM has a 32-bit M3 CPU, that's cool, uh, 128K of memory, more than I need, SPI and I2C compliant, those are like the connection protocols between chips and peripherals, <coughs> it's kind of like the internet between microcontrollers, it had that, a TI CC3000 Wi-Fi chip, it had that, Arduino compatible, no. And people say yes it is because they're chip heads and they know the difference, but me, I'm not a chip head yet. And when you say it's Arduino compatible, that means it will work with my external components and I can just cut and paste the code from one thing to another. But that's not how it works. The Arduino is one thing, the <coughs> Spark Core is another. And long story short, I'm going to have to start all over again from scratch. <laughs> And that made me not happy. But despite all this problem, it's the Spark is very, very cool. It had a really dedicated core group of developers and I'd be looking on the forums and one guy came in there, you know I'd really like to see it do blah. And some developer would stay up all night and the next morning, boom, there it is. And so, uh, shout out to PK123 who helped me a lot on my project. And so I figured, well, all this stuff is getting updated. Let's see what happens. So libraries, somebody posted SD card libraries to the forums. They compiled for me. Great. Somebody posted GPS libraries to the forum. They compiled and they worked with my GPS. Shield. Cool. So Wi-Fi libraries, not so much because the 
uh, the Spark Core is builds itself as an Internet of Things device, and you're going to say that a couple times because it screwed me a couple times. Uh, <coughs> so Wi-Fi is really in the background as a service. You're supposed to do your coding up front, and they're just supposed to connect you to the Internet for your stuff. It's not there to mess with, but I want to mess with it. So the Adafruit board that I bought had the exact same chip on it, and Adafruit had their libraries available for download. So I figured since it's the same chip, I could download these libraries, and I I'd messed with it before because you know how Thomas Edison said I had a I found a hundred ways not to make a light bulb before I finally found a way to make a light bulb. I found a lot of ways to not make a kitty collar. So <coughs> I, I messed with these things and I had some SS, uh, SSID scanning stuff where I just copied and pasted it, put it in there and BAM! It worked! Yes! So now I've got the GPS working on the Spark, I've got the SD compiled on the Spark, SSID collections working on the Spark. Now I've got to start working with those tiny components that I bought and that means soldering. <laughs> Who out there knows how to solder? And likes it. Yeah, you see that? <laughs> yeah. Soldering is my new least favorite activity. For those of <laughs> so for those of you who are getting ready to learn how to solder, I got some rules for you. Rule number one is don't touch touch the pointy end. <laughs> That's where the hotness is. Rule number two is always remember where you put the soldering iron down. <laughs> If you violate rule number two, you're going to violate rule number one. <laughs> rule number three is everything looks so easy on the internet. And it's not. So that notwithstanding, my first attempts at soldering rather went rather well. I got the uh, SD card breakout board here. This is all my breadboard stuff. The chips on the on the uh, le left hand side. There's a quarter of the SD breakout board, and I had to solder headers onto the end of the cords for the uh, GPS antenna. So that went pretty good. <clears throat> Now at home testing everything went great and I was getting sniffing, I was doing the stuff, I took it out in my yard, I watched my neighbor's Wi-Fi and then I took it in a car ride and there was massive failure, nothing, I didn't collect anything, why not? Well, <clears throat> again, the Spark is an Internet of Things device, it's never meant to be not connected to the Internet. So I was talking to the guys on the forums about how do I do this, this for, and they were speaking about power consumption and I was like, oh yeah, turn that chip on and off because it's just going to suck power. So, but when you turn it on, make sure you encase all further code in a if status equals Wi-Fi on clause. If status equals Wi-Fi on only returns true if it's connected to a known Wi-Fi access point. And if I'm a half a mile down the road, that's not going to happen. So what I did is I noticed that I could turn on the chip and then do my SSID scan real quick before it actually made a connection. And that worked perfectly. So I removed the co that code from my stuff and that's all I needed anyway. So now I'm back on track. So I took it for a drive and I got data back and I'm like, yes! <clears throat> and then I started looking at the GPS cords and popping them into Google Earth and I was driving on the highway and they had me off in a lake. And I was sitting at my house and they had me halfway down the block. I'm like, what's going wrong? Well, whoever posted the GPS libraries, they did the wrong, they did the NMEA conversion incorrectly. So now I'm back to having no GPS libraries. So <clears throat> when I was working on the Arduino stuff, I had the GPS++ stuff that I'd really like to use. I loved tiny GPS++ because it was very easy to interact with and have everything I need. So I need to find a way or find someone to put this GPS++ into the Spark stuff. And so I talked to my friend Bill and he said, well, why don't you just port the libraries? I'm like, well, how do you port libraries? And he explained it to me in a way similar to my rocket science story, which is <clears throat> having drinks in a bar with somebody and uh, this guy joins our conversation and he's a pretty cool guy. So eventually the question comes up, what do you do for a living? He's like, I'm a rocket scientist scientist. I'm like, no, seriously, what do you do for a living? He's like, no, seriously, I'm a rocket scientist. <clears throat> and so like, oh, that's cool. <clears throat> what do you think about the phrase, it's not rocket science? And he's like, well, I laugh at that because, you know, there's some science and engineering that goes into building the rocket and putting the fuel in them. But at the end of the day, you just put the rocket on the launch pad, hit the red button, hope for the best. <clears throat> <clears throat> Sometimes it blows up, sometimes it falls over and blows up, sometimes it gets all the way to space and then blows up. <laughs> and the hard part is not getting new rockets, the hard part is getting more monkeys to put in the rockets. <laughs> oh, listen to guys, oh, don't hurt the monkeys, it's a rocket science joke. So anyway, that's how you port libraries as it turns out. <clears throat> You change the Arduino stuff out with the Spark stuff, you hit compile, listen to it scream at you, then you go fix what's screaming about and you keep doing that until it doesn't scream at you anymore. And if the compiler screams at you and you scream back, you only really succeed in scaring your wife. So, <laughs> so I did that for a couple hours and bam, it works. I have now ported libraries. I was so proud of myself I posted them to GitHub. <laughs> So 
So the next problem is then power consumption and my buddy Ricky Hill hooked me up with these E-flight batteries. They're used for uh, model airplane stuff. 3.7 volts, 500 milliamp batteries. Enough to get a little kitty, going, kitty thing going. So now I'm testing for the optimal power consumption thing here. And <clears throat> the first thing you think of is, oh, I'll just turn everything on, get the stuff and then turn everything off. But remember, I told you before that it can sometimes take 2 to 15 minutes to get a GPS lock. If you turn off the GPS antenna, it loses the satellites. And the cat runs under a bush and then you burn through your power without getting any data. So what I found the best solution for me was you turn the, you turn the main microcontroller on and off, you keep the GPS chip powered and that worked much, much better. Collections every 30 seconds, let the whole solution lasted for 4 hours. Every 10 minutes it lasted for 8 hours. So now I have to make a collar. <coughs> and if you thought soldering was fun, desoldering is twice as much fun as soldering ever was. Oh my god, I destroyed so much crap trying to desolder things. The internet again was not helpful and YouTube made everything look too easy. So I talked to my friend Joey and he said, yeah, head out to your local maker shop in Nova Labs and they will help you out. So shout out to Nova Labs in Western Virginia. Ted, mad scientist. <laughs> Evil genius helped me learn how to do Eagle and uh, again a solution that didn't end up in the final one. And Brian was my soldering tutor. He taught me the right iron and the right solder made my life a whole hell of a lot easier. So now I actually have to make the collar itself. And hard stop man. I don't know how to make a collar. It's like I can code things and I just learned how to solder but this is like ribbons. So I talked to my friend Joe and he's like why don't you just get a couple ribbons and sew them together and then you can put your stuff inside of it. And I'm like cool. So I went down to Michael's and I got myself a ribbon. <laughs> it's leopard skin prints. It's so in this year for all the cats. I'm sorry. <clears throat> but now I need to sew it together. Who knows how to sew? It's like 2014. We don't sew stuff. We just go buy new stuff. It's like, it's a grandma skill, right? So what do you do? You get a grandma. <laughs> this is my wife's grandmother. Her name is Nancy. She's very nice to meet you. <clears throat> And she was very happy to help me out. And here's the final collar assembly. We have a dollar bill followed by the E-flight battery, the actual collar, and then the components all wrapped up not only to keep protect them from weather, but the spark has a lot of flashy bits. So I didn't want to put that on the cat. So now we're back to our volunteer cat. <laughs> this bastard still owes me a cell phone. <laughs> So we're going to send him out with some practice stuff first to see that he comes back with it and then I might let him play with my tech. So we put the collar on him to see if he tolerated it and he tolerated it marvelously. Reminding you of what it looked like before <laughs> and what it looks like now. Look at him. It's all cool except you see that little bit behind his head, that little metal bit, that's the name collar. It's supposed to go on the bottom because the GPS chip is directly opposite. So we have to put a weight on it. So I went down to Ranger Supply. <laughs> it's a war kit. It's a bullet. So now the new plan is the tech goes on the collar, collar goes on the cat, cat goes for a walkabout and profit. So initial deployments were nothing. I'm like, no, 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 I know this works. So I grabbed all my stuff and I went out to my buddy Reeves' house, I did all the diagnostic and everything's working fine. So I'm like, what's going on? So we put the collar on the cat, we had a couple beers, cat walked under a bush and he hung out under that bush and licked himself for 20 minutes. <laughs> People are like, he's cleaning himself. I'm like, yeah, with his tongue, he's licking himself. And so I said, hey, Reeves, is that the cat under the bush? He's like, no. And he walked up, he walked over to the bush, he's like, yes. And he grabs the bush and he shakes the bush and the cat goes running it. But we figured out a better deployment process would be to let the collar sit outside for five or ten minutes, get that GPS lock, bring the collar, bring the cat to the collar, put it on the cat, and then let the cat go for a walkabout. And this time it'll work, maybe? Hope it. Success, bitches. <laughs> Here's the initial results, obfuscated for obvious reasons, and I've got somebody contacting me off the internet and he said, hey, I can help you out with visualizing this and check this out. Somebody did this for me. That's awesome. <laughs> I'd like to point out that I've been working on this for a good number of months and the damn cat never left the front yard. <laughs> First he went was the car. So then we went, my grandmother said, oh, I'd love to know where Coco goes. So we strapped it up to Coco and we got some results here. But I'd like to point out over here, I don't know if the mouse is showing up. We still have WEP and we still have open Wi-Fi hotspots in 2014. Oh my God. Yeah. So but Coco went a lot further as you'll see. There he goes. He wandered all over the neighborhood. <laughs> 
Yeah, he's gonna take a while. He actually caught a mouse during this deployment. <laughs> That was very, very cool. Yeah, but you see, it got really cool results. The cats tolerated it brilliantly, and it was the fruition of a long bunch of work, and I can't tell you how happy I was to get the initial results back. And so that's the war kitty, ladies and gentlemen. So now we move on to the denial of service dog. Yes. So the denial of service dog admittedly is just trolling. There's nothing socially redeeming about it at all. I got a Wi-Fi pineapple that I bought at Shmoo. I got a TV Gun that I bought at Radio Shack's the Adafruit kit. A uh, doggy backpack with some d denial of service dog patches on it. There's the pineapple. You know what that is. I had Karma up answering probes. Uh, DNS spoof to redirect everything to the pineapple. And then there's a package you can download on the pineapple called Random Roll. And it just has like five or six Rick Rolls that it just cycles through as people connect to it. <laughs> It's awesome. <laughs> so here's the TV begun as it comes with my newfound soldering skills. I turned it, what was supposed to be this, into this. <laughs> and the idea being I was going to put, get a uh, saddle bag, put the TV begun in the saddle bag and connect the wires and run them up through so the LEDs are on the outside of the saddle bag. And so now I need some patches and holy crap, how hard is it to get somebody to make you patches these days? Nobody does it anymore except on the internet. So, oh, we'll sell you 500 of them at five bucks a piece. I'm like, no. So I beat the streets for quite a while and thank God I found Arena and Friends at Joanne's Fabrics in Sterling, Virginia and they made me a denial of service dog patch. I like the little Wi-Fi thing right there. So I have a, pre a video demonstration to prove that it works here. So you see there's the denial service dog stuff and the Adafruit stuff all wired up and there's the LED sticking outside of the saddlebags. I ran a wire up the leash and have a button in my hand right there. I used a lacrosse tape to tie the wire onto the leash. The idea is you hit the button right there, you see the little green light start flashing on the Adafruit kit and then the TV will then just turn off. Bam. <laughs> And here's a demonstration video of the stuff working. We've got the karma. Go well, I am outside somewhere. And you'll see that I, the denial of service dog SSID is up because that was another thing that I did. I'm going to add a Wi Fi hotspot. It's going to be called DEF CON. And I'm filming with one hand and typing with the other. Forgive me how long it took to do this. <laughs> Try to connect, and karma's going to go, oh, that's me over here. So he's going to pop up. I'm going to connect. And then I'm going to go out to the internet. Excuse us. Excuse us. We're, we're going to have to interrupt you for just a minute here. Um, I said welcome to DEF CON earlier. Uh, we've got a tradition here. And if you've never seen this tradition, it's uh, a wonderful tradition where new speakers get welcomed to DEF CON with an appropriate beverage of choice. So. Since Gene has never spoken at DEF CON before, we decided to welcome him, even to the extent of interrupting his presentation. <laughs> and uh, we'd like to welcome him to DEF CON for the first time speaking. Cheers. Good morning. Thank you. Uh, little hair of the dog. <laughs> hair of the denial of service dog. <laughs> uh, awesome. So, uh, so long story short, let's see, where was I? Oh yes. So I'm playing with this. I wish there was a way to speed this up. But we're going to go through it all again because, oh wow, that's good stuff, man. <laughs> so I added DEF CON to the whole thing. And Karma's going to see that probe go out. It's going to grab it and say, hey, that's me. It's going to pull it back into the Wi-Fi pineapple. And that's how it all works and it works brilliantly. See, it's just going to pop up, bam, I'm DEF CON. The funny part is I tried to do this again later, I just turned on my phone and said, oh, there's the DEF CON AP, bam. <laughs> <laughs> and you see I'll go up, it's like da 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 circus, da 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 afro. <laughs> and so I'm going to go to CNN. And it's going to come back up, poke it out, poke it out, poke it out, afro. <laughs> So that's how that thing works. So now we need a volunteer dog for our for to be our denial of service dog. And you'll notice that this volunteer dog is a Doberman Pinscher. 
Have you ever seen a Doberman pincer service dog? No. Well, now you have. <laughs> so our volunteer dog is quite possibly the most anti-Doberman Doberman. When I got there, he just loves everybody, and he ran around the yard for 10 minutes. Like, oh, my God, so happy. New people, new people, new people. <laughs> And so we dragged him inside the house and put the backpack on him and he stood like this for 10 minutes. <laughs> and that's just good because it allowed me to take pictures. There's all the service dog patches on here. And he got that going on there. So the first thing that the V-Dog did when he stopped being comatose for half an hour is he did this. And what we discovered, two things. Uh, one, there's now two ways to deploy the TV be gone. One is you hit the button, the other is the dog shakes. <laughs> the other thing I discovered was that I failed to properly secure the TV be gone into the pouch. And every time he did that, it went flying all over the place. And in the process of doing so, completely destroyed my TV be gone to the point that even with my newfound soldering prowess, I was not able to bring it back. So, next. <laughs> so, the funny thing is, if it says service dog on your dog's backpack, they will let you in. <laughs> Mine very clearly said denial of service dog. They look right, oh, service dog, oh yeah, sure. <laughs> and here's the part where I tell you that one man's video proof to DEF CON is another man's evidence in court. <laughs> but the truth of the matter is I was so focused on what was going on with the denial of service dog that I hit the wrong button on the GoPro. It's got two buttons, I hit the wrong one. So I'm going to have to go all XKCD on you here. So there we are with the V-Dog. He's like, oh, I love you, play. I said, do you mind if we come in? Everywhere we asked. Everywhere we went, we asked if it was okay to come in. The guy's like, sure, you want something to drink? And then off in the corner you hear, it was a peanut butter jelly time, peanut butter jelly time. <laughs> I'm taking some artistic license here, but still. It's, so about the third or fourth time the guy came back to our table, he's like, hey, why does it say denial of service, dog? <laughs> Props to this guy, because he's the only one all day long that ever asked. But we didn't answer him, and he just went away. <laughs> So you want to go into a sports bar and you hit the button and it's like, oh, ball, play. And you know, if it just happens to be, uh, I don't know, the World Cup game, the Argentina semifinal, and you hit the button and it goes away. <laughs> you're like, <"Kay!" laughs> and It's like, never going to give you up. <laughs> <laughs> So if you go into a restaurant that has 50 TVs on the wall, they're all remotely controlled from some dude in the back. But if you go into a restaurant that where there's one or two TVs on the wall, they are not. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> so then, hey, it's a bar. Yeah, he's happy. And so then we go into a J Random box store somewhere. <laughs> And, and the V-Dog's like, oh, I love you. And I'm, as we're walking around, the owner's got the leash in one hand and he's got his hand on the backpacks. Come, sit, do this, sit, sit. This is not a service dog, but nobody. <laughs> <laughs> and the guy's, hey, do you mind if we come in? He's like, sure, make sure he doesn't poop on anything. <laughs> this actually happened. <laughs> and then we go back to the TV section and of course the V-Dog's like, squirrel. <laughs> And then we hit the button and the thing goes up and the television goes away. Yay, we did wonderful things. So. And then off of the course, circuits, afro, circuits, afro. <laughs> so according to the results, several hapless victims connected to the karma slash denial of service dog. Logging failed as I cannot definitively prove that anybody connected to it while we were out. I took some artistic license. However, when I was just giving this presentation to my company a couple weeks ago, people were getting owned right and left. <laughs> And people was like, oh my God, somebody hacked my phone. And people was like, it's Gene, just blow it off, just turn the phone off. <laughs> <laughs> Only one person asked about the denial of service dog. Most people just said nice doggy. So what have we learned overall? A tech hobbyist with no prior firmware experience can create a functional war kit take collar in a relatively short amount of time. You can do this too. I didn't know a damn thing about this stuff when I got started. And I got frustrated, but I kept at it, and bam, I've got some really cool stuff. So in 2014, there are still unsecured Wi Fi hotspots running around. Lots of devices still probe for stuff. There's still no patch for human stupidity. <laughs> and cats and dogs are really hard to work with. <laughs> So I got to give a shout out to all these guys. Uh, JK devices don't go there. They're terrible. Thanks to, <laughs> 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 
Thanks to Reeves, Bill, Joe, Joey, Nancy, Ricky, VDog.owners, Spark Guys, the Nova Labs guys, VDog, Skitsy, Coco, Tenacity, and of course DEFCON. I'm so proud to be here. Anybody ever hears about hackers that that 1.2 billion passwords got stolen, or was it 400,000, or was it did it actually happen? But everywhere I go in this community, you guys are willing to help. If you're not a jerk, you'll be very accommodating, all that good stuff. And I can't tell you, you should be proud to be part of this hacker community. I'm proud to be associated with you guys. And because of that, I went out and did some extracurricular activities for DEF CON with regard to the denial of service dog and the war kit day. So this year's, or this year's, uh, the De DEF CON 22's volunteer war kit is the host of Hacker Jeopardy, Bad Kit <laughs> She's wearing the collar, folks. Look at her. She was a complete sport, man. We went up and down walking the strip. There we are with a couple girls. <laughs> there we are with a couple more street performers. There's all kinds of good guys. Ja Zach Galifianakis guy showed up. <laughs> we hit a couple monuments and did all this stuff. And we had a couple really willing participants <laughs> and a couple of not so willing participants. <laughs> But here are the results from walking up and down DEF CON, uh, walking up and down the Vegas Strip. And I couldn't get the, the kitty to work because of probably uh, the demo fail. I forgot to play to the demo gods, but that's what we did just for you guys over the past couple days. So, and of course we need, we've had the war kit day, we need the denial of service dog. So we found a volunteer denial of service dog, everybody's favorite goon, Sky Dog. <laughs> And so I was explaining to him what I'd like him to do and all this good stuff and when he'd have time and he looks at me and he says, Gene, 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 I don't need a backpack to denial of service somebody. <laughs> if I want them to sing Circus Afro, they will sing Circus Afro. <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of cool people have been paying attention. I was like, I got so much attention paid to me, I never expected all this cool, a lot of really cool stuff. This is my best DEF CON ever, but I gotta leave you guys with this really hilarious, funny thing that happened to me. CNN did this to the war kit. They strapped a GoPro to his back <laughs> with tape. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. And then they're like, okay, cat, get up and walk around. Do, do, do and the cat's like, no. <laughs> the cat's like, I'm not going anywhere. Screw you people. And so CNN found out what I had do so desperately found out over this whole thing is that cats are just damn hard to work with. <laughs> Thank you guys very much. Are there any questions?